Hello, everyone, and welcome to this first edition of the Breeze Sports Center podcast. I'm Bradford Ambrose. Alongside me, uh, the usual suspects, Chase Kitty and Wayne Epps Jr., um, sports editors. Now, guys, let's talk about um, men's basketball first. They're they're pretty hot. Um, they are 12 and 10 overall, 6 and 3 in the CAA. Um, got a game coming up against Hofstra um, Thursday. Hofstra is 5 and 15 and 2 and 5 in CAA. Let's talk about them, and then we can go on to um, uh, JMU playing George Mason this coming Saturday. George Mason is um, up there in rank. Rank, I think. I do believe they're five and three uh, in the CAA and twelve and ten, uh, twelve and eight overall. So Wayne, let's go ahead and talk about them. All right, uh, George Mason's uh, again one of the best teams in the CAA. It's going to be a tough test. Um, in the last matchup against George Mason on uh, the fifteenth a couple weeks ago, um, we, we lost uh, mainly because we gave up too many uh, fouls down the stretch. Um, they scored um, 11 of their points in the, in, uh, from free throws in the final minutes of the, of the game a couple weeks ago at George Mason. Um, so this game, if we um, step up and, and uh, make sure we're careful about our fouls uh, and things like that, I think uh, we would definitely have a great chance to win this game, especially at home, which, at what should be a packed convocation center. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it, it's February. You know, it, it's this is this is when this is when stuff gets real. So uh, I, I know people are definitely going to come out to the convocation center. It's going to be a big deal. Uh, I'm really, I mean, it's, it's the week before my birthday, so I'm obviously excited. Um, you know, my parents are coming for the game. So it's, it's going to be, you know, whenever that happens, it's always a big deal because my parents come to JMU, I don't know, once every other year. <laughs> so, right. I mean, yeah. you guys can jump in whenever here. I don't, yeah. um, Wayne, you're a freshman. Right. This is your first George Mason game, the first, uh-huh. of, first of many to come. On a personal level, I, I guess you got to feel excited for it. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely excited. Um, again, with the big rivalry game, uh, I have a, a friend that loves basketball that goes to George Mason, too, so it's kind of a fun thing there, too, from a rivalry there. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely excited. It's probably the biggest regular season game of the, of the uh, season for us and a nice measuring stick. So um, I'm really pumped to see how we uh, come out and show up for this game because we're really going to probably dictate how, um, how well we'll play the rest of the season. Yeah, I know when I came to JMU um, – I guess Bradford, being a sophomore, you, this this applies to you too. When I came to JMU, the the big three schools that we love to hate: Mason, ODU, and uh, and Virginia Commonwealth. So, and being a Richmond person, the Virginia Commonwealth game meant especially a lot to me. And we're all from Richmond, actually. Now that I think yep, about it, we are. so VCU is definitely a, a close thing for us. And mm-hmm. I, I know that game meant a lot. Obviously, they're gone now. ODU's out the door. Uh, next year so George Mason's really all that we've got left intrastate wise so I, I think George Mason obviously you know being six and three this year mm-hmm. JMU or I'm sorry being five and three JMU six and three it means a lot this year and it's going to mean even more going forward right and and the men's basketball team has had some trouble uh, with, uh, during away games H- haven't done as well as as home games um, understatement yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, how do you think they're going to perform at George Mason, considering that their away winning percentage is considerably low? Well, they've actually already played the away game, so and they lost the away game by eleven. Um, Sixty-eight, fifty-seven. Yeah. That that you know they were in it. One of the better away games they've played this year, actually. You know they go to they go to Towson, they get killed. Uh, you know, they, they lost to Georgia State, and granted, you know, they, they had some troubles during that game, some, some roster concerns, but they, they really haven't played well at all on, on the road this year. Um, George Mason in Fairfax was one of the better road games they played that Wayne mentioned they gave up some fouls late. Um, Mason went on a late run and really pulled away, but that game was closer than an 11-point game, absolutely. Uh, and, and I think they're going to win, frankly. Uh, three games ago... Wayne is my witness. Three games ago, I predicted a six-game winning streak. Um, and a lot of people, I got a lot of crap on Twitter about that. I got a lot of crap from some people in the athletic department about that. Oh, why you got to put some, that kind of stress on us? Why you got to? But, I mean, five home games, one of them being against Mason. One very winnable road game at UNCW that they did end up winning. Um, I, I think Sherrod Wright isn't getting the help that he needs for, for George Mason. Um, as I said on CA Hoops last week, much to some people's 
not liking. <laughs> I suppose. All right, so um, uh, so anything else men's basketball related I want to talk about for shift gears and talk about women's basketball, which they are also uh, pretty hot right now. Uh, well, again, uh, this is not a point. I think the uh, key is going to be the, the freshman. Um, we we'll talk about that in that latest issue of the Breeze. Um, uh, Ron Curry, Charles Cook, and LJ Nation, those three guards, they're going to be key. Uh, they were key in, the, in our, in our uh, latest one against at home against ODU. Um, so I think it's going to be, um, they're going to be integral factors in the, in the game. So, again, we'll see how you match up against Gerard White, right? And, uh, and uh, it's going to be a major matchup. So, again, we're excited for it. Yeah, I think the big thing, especially with Mason, the game coming up, I, I think Hofstra, frankly, I don't think that game will be close. I think you're looking at another UNCW type of blowout where they win by 27. You know, that that's an insane margin to win by. So I'm not obviously saying, oh, they're going to go out and win by 30. Right. But I think it won't be close. I think the big difference now is the defense. You know, Matt Brady's been here five years, and he, he said something very striking in the post game. If you were listening on Madison Monday night at UNCW, Matt Brady got on the radio and said, you know, this is the first group of kids I've ever had that it's like they're buying in on defense finally. You know, I'm not an idiot. I know how to coach defense. This isn't magic. And I was like, wow, I can't believe that he said that. that I mean, that's, that's remarkable that a coach would say something like that. But... You know, he's coaching for his job, and he's right. He's, he's got a group that's really buying in on defense, and I think if you look at the metrics and the statistics recently, that's where the team has improved. They've been offensively kind of average the whole year. Right. So I think the, the defense is really what's stepping up, and it's what's going to win them some games down the stretch here. I uh, just want to add in point. It's the defensive improvement has all been without um, Andre Seminoff as well. Um, he's been gone for about a month with the ankle injury. So um, they're playing this ball defensively without him. So once they get him back, when, whenever they get him back, um, it's going to be a, a, a great group out there on the floor. So definitely looking forward to that. And I actually saw the other day um, Matt Bray is actually being considered as um, CAA Coach of the Year against um, – two other coaches, so that, that was pretty striking to see, um, that he's in the hot seat, he's at the fifth year, end of his contract, trying to decide if they're going to renew, and, uh, you know, he's being considered as coach of the year. Yeah, it's definitely something the JMU Athletic Department can't ignore, I feel like. Uh, a lot of people feel that Brady has, has, at this point, with ten games left in the season or whatever, you know, there's not a whole lot of things that he can do to save his job. He's kind of made his bed, and now he's just going to have to see where the athletic department falls. But stuff like that, late pushes, being considered for coach of the year, I think that's a big deal. And, and I hope the personally, I hope that the JMU athletic department uh, keeps Brady for a couple more years. But that's just me. Right. Okay. Um, so now we're going to switch gears to women's basketball, also hot. Their overall record is 12-7. and seven. They are six and one in CAA, just one loss, um, and they played Hofstra, won against them, 85-62, um, and their next game is Thursday against Towson away. Um, Wayne Chase, you know, talk about uh, their season so far and, and and kind of looking ahead. Right, as you mentioned, they've been on a tear. They have a five-game winning streak. Um, they've just been blowing out opponents. Um, over the last five games, they outscored opponents by an average of 17.6 points. Um, so it's been a crazy run that they've been on. Um, this upcoming game against Towson uh, should be an easy, not an easy win for them. Uh, Towson has a 7 11 record, and they've only won one game in the CAA. They're 1 and 6. Um, so I, I look forward to them to continue um, their winning streak for the next couple of games. Uh, after Towson, they'll be playing William and Mary. Um, I think the toughest test for them coming up will be in February, uh, February 10th. They have a game against uh, Delaware, um, who's an all-top team in the CA and the women's side. So um, they should be able to cruise in the next couple of games. But, uh, uh, again, it'll be like the George Mason game for the men coming up this weekend. The Delaware game for the women in February is going to be a nice measuring stick for them to see where they really are at. So um, definitely look forward to that. Yeah, they are hotter than the sun right now. They're, I mean, really. Yeah, they, they, are, they are on a roll. And, and it's it's really been, I feel like, an up-and-down season for them, uh, especially the beginning. You know, nobody knew the kind of hole, that the, the defensive hole that was going to be left by 
by Nikki Newman going out, but also by, um, oh, forgive me, Coach Brooks, I, I cannot remember the name of the player that graduated last year, but they, they lost a really big defensive player who I'm going to remember in just a second yes. and it's going to come to me. Yep, I uh, remember. <laughs> but I can't I, think of her name. I, I know, it's bothering the crap out of me, but they, they lost a huge player in her, and it sh the, just the defensive hole, they could not recover from it. Uh, losing Nikki Newman, she's a big offensive piece. She spreads the floor a lot like Andre Semenov does. It's right. very strange that they lost both of those players this year on on each on each team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Kenny said at, at a post game the other day they've kind of formed this two headed monster between Kenita Shepard and Crystal Ross, two younger players that that are uh, that are are. Well, what do you what do you call in women's basketball a big man, a big woman? Uh, I, no, I guess they're, 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 they're kind of they're big power forward center type of players, kind of thing, yeah. and, and they you know they they switch out and they they'll double team people and and, and they've really stepped up the defensive presence that uh, Lauren Whitehurst. Now that I remember her name, Lauren Whitehurst, that's her name. Uh, yep, you know, great all time JMU type of player. She's fantastic. Transferred from Boston College in, earlier in her career, and she she was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, Broke the single season blocks record. Uh, she she was really really great, and I I don't think anybody imagined the, how big the hole was that that she would leave. But they really struggled in the beginning of the year, and that's yeah, why they did. that's why their record looks like it does. You know they're mm -hmm. they're twelve and seven overall, but they are on a tear right now because they figured it out. Yeah, and a lot of their losses came at the beginning. Absolutely, of the season. at one point they were three and six, and now they're twelve and seven. And people were really questioning. Since they were so good last year, went on that WNIT run, and starting out three and six, people kind of were scratching their heads, and and I think Coach Brooks was scratching his head too, trying to figure out, you know, what do we have to do to to be a, a high caliber team like we were last year. And, and the the amazing thing, the difference between men's and women's basketball at JMU is that the men are very, they're they're built very unorthodox. You know they. They've got a bunch of specialists, you know. AJ Davis is is a dunk master, oh, and yeah. and Devon Moore is sort of like this gritty veteran guy, and Rayshon Goins is a grinder in the paint. They've they've got all these guys that have all these different roles, mm -hmm. whereas the women's team is built much more like a traditional powerhouse. You know, they have an elite point guard, an elite shooter, and then they get one big contribution from somebody that changes every night. Yeah. yeah. And now they they had that defensive player that was really great, Nikki, but she's gone now. So, right. you know, the the fact that other people are stepping up, Precious Hall has been phenomenal the last few weeks. This young freshman that's gonna that's gonna follow in Tariq's footsteps. Mm -hmm. um, so that they're really getting things figured out. And as Wayne mentioned earlier, um, you know that Delaware game is really that winner of that game wins the CAA in all likelihood. So yeah, and that is not too far off. That is less than what two weeks. It's coming up. Yeah, down the pipe. Um, so, looking ahead, do you think Coach Brooks is worried um, at you know any kind of any kind of way, or do you think you know he's got some confidence build up going into the towards the end of the regular season? John, any thoughts on that win? Uh, I, th I think he's confident um, the way they're going. Again, Nikki Newman's been out for a while, so um, you know she, she going to the season. She, she's probably the most important player on the team, and they've stepped up without her. So I think he, he has a lot of confidence in them. They're rolling right now, um, so I think uh, he's happy with what he's seeing, and uh, he's got to keep doing what they're doing, and I think they'll be they'll be fine. And also, I just remembered. I think Kirby Bur Burkholder had a career high twenty eight she points did. against Hofstra. Um, Monsters this, game. The, uh, yeah. C A so week. He she has not dropped off um, one bit from last year. She's still, uh, you know, leading leading this team. Yeah, the thing that that coach has banged on with me privately is that you know Kirby was not always this phenomenal shooter. Right. She. She she really has had to be converted into this shooting guard type of player. She's she's not used to pulling the trigger 15 times a game. She she really has to be almost talked into it and talked up to this point where she feels comfortable shooting all the time. And 
the the reason you saw the team get so hot at the end of last year is that Kirby caught fire in a couple of games late, and and Kenny was saying, you know, this is what you can be. Don't you see now, like, when you shoot this much, this is what you look like, this is what you can be. And she kind of started buying into that. And, you know, it's a long off season. New late new players have to emerge in a new season. Um, but Kirby has started to buy into that concept again of, I'm a shooter, this is what I can do, this is what I can be. And you really see that bear that out when they're beating people by 25 people, 25 points a night. Right. It's crazy what this team is doing lately. Wayne, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, just uh, go along with what Jay said. Um, I think that's going to be good to go. All right. Um, next, what are we going to talk about? Uh, talk about some tennis, um, men's and women's tennis. Uh, just starting off the spring semester schedules. Uh, the men's team was struggling a bit. Uh, they lost the first two matches of the, of the spring schedule. Um, they really struggled against BC and Richmond a couple weeks ago. Um, they lost both of those matches, uh, one game to four. Um, then recently, on you know, uh, this past weekend against uh, Duquesne, um, they lost four games to three, and they were shut out in all the doubles matches. So um, they've been struggling a bit. Um, they, have, they have a lot of experience, but, but still, they've been struggling. So um, we'll see moving forward how, how, how well they do that. We have a tough match coming up on, on uh, February against UNC Chapel Hill, and they're one of the top programs in the country. So uh, it's going to be another tough chance for them coming up. So no easy going for that. Uh, so it definitely just got uh, to work on things and, uh, and get straight for that. Yeah, uh, I've been informed that it is something called a conflict of interest to be the sports editor and play for a team you might cover. So unfortunately, I can't join the tennis team <laughs> and play with them. I would love to, being a high school tennis player and a great tennis enthusiast. Plus, I, too, think that I could have a wristwatch named after me like Roger Federer. All right. But, uh, okay. uh, anyway, you know. It, it, Good old Chase. Yeah, well, you know, I got to get one crazy thing in a podcast is what I'm aiming for. <laughs> so, hey, Rolex, the kitty timepiece. Make it happen. All right, so uh, the men may be struggling with the women. They're on a roll so far. Um, they had their first match uh, this past weekend on Sunday, and they just uh, pretty much destroyed George Mason. They uh, uh, shut him out five games to zero. Uh, so they're looking really good. They have the next match coming up here against uh, University of North Carolina Wilmington. Um, and they should, that team is struggling in their fall schedule, so uh, that should be another win for them. So uh, it's one bright spot with the tennis program right there. So mm-hmm. hopefully the, the – uh, the women can rub off a little bit on the men's moving forward. <laughs> All right, any last thoughts, guys, before we uh, close out this first edition? Uh, go Dukes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, you can catch highlights and post-game reaction of the men's basketball game um, Thursday and Saturday on um, breezejmu.org, also in the paper. Um, we write things. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody, anything else? You want to let the listeners know about coming up in the bre- in, in the breeze in the sports section? I've got a birthday coming up. <laughs> Baseball preview. Pick that up Thursday issue of the breeze. Absolutely. That Baseball pick to finish in the top half of the conference. Stephen Prophet has more at five. <laughs> All right. Um, and actually, before we go, Super Bowl picks. Mm, Super Bowl picks. Super Bowl picks. Wayne, I'm going to let you go first. Uh, I have to go with the Ravens here. Um, it's, it's not really a geographical thing, but um, I, I I really like Ray Light, Ray Rice. I really like that that defense. I think they're gonna be very impassioned with Ray Rice or um, Ray Lewis's last game. Uh, I think that that defense is really gonna step up uh, against a rookie quarterback. Um, Kind of confident, has shown a lot of poise in the, in, um, the last half of the season he's been starting. Uh, but I think the, the Super Bowl in the big stage against that, that Ravens defense, I don't know how, how well he's going to play. It's going to be a close game, but uh, I think the Ravens are going to pull it out. All right, Chase, your pick. I'm also taking the Ravens. Um, yeah, I think Ed Reed is going to find a way to make Colin Kaepernick stay really long. Um <laughs> Yeah, the, the the kid has shown an unbelievable amount of poise. I'm getting really tired, though, of all the ESPN people saying things like, oh, two years ago, nobody knew who Colin Kaepernick was. Ha ha. Yeah, he went to Nevada. I know who he is. Most <laughs> sports people know who he is if you watch any college football at all. Um, Say records there. So. Yeah, he was, he was phenomenal at Nevada. It beat Boise State. 
Uh, evidently they're good. <laughs> Supposedly. Uh, supposedly. I have no further comment on that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think the Ravens. I, I think everything that Wayne said is true. I, I think they're going to play inspired for Ray for Ray Lewis. I've always liked Ray Rice being a big West Virginia fan. I always watched uh, West Virginia Rutgers games uh, back when Pat White was big in college football, and I always remember thinking, man, Rutgers is terrible, but that Ray Rice kid's pretty good. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, that now he is one of the best right. running backs in the NFL. I, I, think, I think there's too many weapons. Everybody wants to talk about, you know, um, the tight end for the 49ers and some of the receivers, you know, they're good, but Torrey Smith is just as good. I hate that Joe Flacco went to Delaware because I really don't like Delaware being a James Madison soon-to-be alumni. <laughs> but I like the Ravens. I think the Ravens right. take it. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. This has been the first edition of the Bree Sports Center podcast. <laughs>